somebody ask you in the audience, somebody ask you, um, Andreas, but what about the energy consumption? Uh, Bitcoin consumes more than Denmark. Isn't that totally inefficient? Isn't it much more expensive to transact as opposed to Visa or with normal bank transactions? Well, there, there's a couple of things. The first one is that Bitcoin's energy consumption is very visible, because Bitcoin is a transparent system. You can see the energy that is being consumed in real time. But what you can't see is where this energy is being consumed and what form it has. Meanwhile, in the traditional banking system, um, most of the energy consumption is hidden. So you can't see the energy cost of the vast bureaucracy. You can't see the energy cost of the data centers, of the armored trucks moving cash around, of the uh, guards and bank buildings, and all of the um, all of the people who work and the lights in the buildings and all of that stuff. With Bitcoin mining, you can do that anywhere, and so just based on self-interest, miners will migrate to the places that have the lowest cost electricity, and usually that's places that have production of alternative energy and renewable energy that cannot be distributed easily, and they have an overcapacity. And it's also in areas that are not uh, in tight urban environments. So a lot of this is kind of uh, it's almost concern trolling from the media. It's like we are very concerned about the energy impact of Bitcoin. Oh, you should really check out the energy impact of capitalism, or even better, the energy impact of war. Do you know who the largest consumer of energy in the United States is? The military, right? And the largest consumer of oil, also, and the biggest polluter in the world is the military. So, pardon me if I don't take that concern so seriously.